Although the date and place of her birth are not documented, scholars believe that she was born in 1753 in a country in West Africa, most likely in present-day Gambia or Senegal. Her birth name is unknown and she was sold into slavery around the age of six or seven by a local chief. She was taken to Boston in the British colony of Massachusetts on July 11, 1761 on a slave ship called the Phyllis. On arrival in Boston, she was bought by the wealthy Boston merchant and tailor John Wheatley as a slave for his wife Susanna. John and Susanna Wheatley named her Phyllis after the ship that had transported her to the British America. She was given her last name of Wheatley as was a common custom if any surname was used for enslaved people. From here on, she was known as Phyllis Wheatley. John Wheatley was known as a progressive throughout New England. His family afforded Phyllis an unprecedented education for an enslaved person and one unusual for a woman of any race. By the age of 12, she was reading Greek and Latin classics in their original languages, as well as difficult passages from the Bible. At the age of 14, she wrote her first poem to the University of Cambridge in New England. Recognizing her literary ability, the Wheatley family supported Phyllis's education and left household labor to their other domestic slaves. In 1768, Wheatley wrote to the King's Most Excellent Majesty, in which she praised King George III for repealing the Stamped Act. In 1770, Wheatley wrote a poetic tribute to the evangelist George Whitfield. Many colonialists found it difficult to believe that a slave was writing poetry. Phyllis Wheatley had to defend her authorship of her poem in court in 1772. She was examined by a group of Boston luminaries, including John Irving, Reverend Charles Chauncey, John Hancock, Thomas Hutchinson, the governor of Massachusetts, and his lieutenant governor, Andrew Oliver. They concluded she had written the poems ascribed to her. She attempted to publish her book of collected works, poems on various subjects, religious and moral. Publishers in Boston had declined to publish it, but her work was of great interest to influential people in London, England. In 1773, at the age of 20, Phyllis accompanied Nathaniel Wheatley to London, England because Susanna believed Phyllis would have a better chance of publishing her book of poems there. She had an audience with Frederick Bull, who was the Lord Mayor of London and other significant members of British society. The Countess of Huntington, Selina Hastings, became interested in the talented young African-born woman and subsidized the publication of Wheatley's volume of poems which appeared in London in the summer of 1773. Poems on various subjects, religious and moral, was printed in 11 editions until 1816. After her book was published by November 1773, the Wheatleys emancipated Phyllis. Phyllis Wheatley wrote a letter to Reverend Samson Oakham, commending him on his ideas and beliefs, stating that enslaved people should be given their natural born rights in America. Her former slave owner, Susanna died in the spring of 1774. In 1775, she sent a copy of a poem entitled To His Excellency George Washington to the then military general. The following year, General George Washington invited Phyllis Wheatley to visit him at his headquarters in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which she did in March of 1776. Thomas Paine republished the poem in the Pennsylvania Gazette in April of 1776. Shortly after the death of John Wheatley in 1778, Phyllis Wheatley met and married John Peters, a free black grocer. They lived in poor conditions and two of their babies died. John was imprisoned for debt in 1784. With a sickly infant son to provide for, Phyllis became a scullery maid at a boarding house, work she had never done before. In 1779, Phyllis Wheatley issued a proposal for a second volume of poems, but was unable to publish it because she had lost her patrons after her emancipation. The American Revolutionary War of Independence was also a factor, as it was still going on at the time. However, some of her poems that were to be included in the second volume were later published in pamphlets and in newspapers. She died on December 5, 1784 at the age of 31. Her infant son died soon after. Phyllis Wheatley is featured, along with Abigail Adams and Lucy Stone, in the Boston Women's Memorial a 2003 sculpture on Commonwealth Avenue in Boston, Massachusetts.